907 on Super Talk, 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. We cannot keep letting the orange man get away with it. Oh, my goodness. Did you hear him? Did you hear Trump? What? He called for political violence over the weekend. He said, oh, my gosh. He said there would be a bloodbath if he wasn't reelected. People, calm down. I know. I know. We'll get through this together. Except, you know, he didn't. He didn't actually do that. <laughs> but the left-wing media has been all about this. It's a bloodbath. Oh, my gosh. The orange man. He called for a bloodbath. Even W... Oh! <laughs> Even WKRN, our own local WKRN, sent out a tweet. And uh, it was just a little leftover scream. Yeah, it was leftover. They were like, still scared. <laughs> well, maybe that was because of WKRN. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the WKRN. They're petrified. I'm not going to play any of their clips, I promise. <laughs> WKRN, they tweeted out the left-wing propaganda last night. This is after an entire weekend of it being completely debunked. It got debunked, son. You can't just tweet that out. So I, I, uh, I tweeted them. And I said, uh, hey, uh, at WKRN, you are fake news. And then as I sat there stewing doing my show prep last night, I decided to find the news director's name. It's pretty easy. You just go to the contact us page. Yeah, yeah. It's out there. <laughs> so then I found I found his Twitter handle. You know this guy's name is Elbert? Elbert? Yeah, I don't know. It's like low-hanging fruit. So I don't want <laughs> to make fun of the name too much. Seems looks like a nice guy. But I said... Uh, his, his handle is E Tucker News 2. I said, hey, uh, at E Tucker News 2, do you approve the leftist propaganda tweets before they're sent out? Question mark. I have not yet received a response. Uh, we are awaiting comment. <laughs> at, at time of air, we had received no word back. I'm so, so surprised he's ignoring that you one. You don't think? Why? We don't, I thought that was a pretty good one. I didn't say he does approve the leftist propaganda. I was asking if he did. Here's why I'm so frustrated. It's like we deal with these hoaxes time after time after time. Russia collusion hoax, Charlottesville hoax, perfectly good phone call hoax. I mean, we can go on and on and on, right? But it drives me absolutely mad that nobody does any stinking research anymore. I'm getting called low IQ by uh, leftist propaganda spoon feeders uh, on social media. A right -wing, I'm called a right-wing propagandist uh, by this guy, Homer Titans. I told him to call into the show. He, he's not going to call into the show. No. And and, and I, I told him, I said, I honestly feel bad for you, bro. I'm not even mad. Just disappointed. Uh, but I feel bad. Because there's there's two quotes going around, okay? There's, there's what the left is playing, right? And, and the left is playing a, a watered-down... Uh, quick nine second version of the quote. Okay, this is this is what the left has been playing on repeat. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. Ah! We can't let him get away with it. The orange man is calling for violence. You guys, the Biden campaign put out a statement on this. Think you can't. You can't just call for violence. Who would do such a thing? So this is, listen, this is the Biden-Harris campaign put out a statement on Trump promising a bloodbath if he loses. This is, are you ready for this? They literally typed this up based on that nine second clip. And I'm going to play you the full clip in a second. Uh, based on that nine second clip, they said tonight, Donald Trump said there would be a bloodbath if he wasn't elected. And that if he lost, there would be no more elections. Okay, so if you watch Trump's speech, you know that that's not what he meant. He was talking about the auto industry. Okay? It's just, it's just not true. But, but there's three more paragraphs to get through. So, like, bear with me. Because I'm probably going to be stopping and getting angrier as I go on. Uh, after opening the general election... By meeting with authoritarian leaders and rallying alongside conspiracy theorists, Donald Trump continues to praise dictators, promise to pardon political violence, and launch racist attacks against black and brown Americans. I thought, thought we were calling, I thought we were calling them newcomers now. 
right? Isn't that what the Biden administration wants to wants us to call illegal aliens, newcomers? Uh, it's why last night Trump's own former vice president, Mike Pence, who Trump supporters called to hang for not overturning the election, came out against Trump. Again, uh, show me the proof that that people people were angry that day. I, I don't recall any prominent media figures calling to uh, hang Mike Pence. Like, who? Who? Uh, this is why Donald Trump is a loser who gets beat by over 7 million votes and then instead of appealing to a wider mainstream audience, doubles down on his threats of political violence. He wants another January 6th. Didn't Biden say July 6th the other day? Which is it? They got They have to get it straight. Said, but the American people are going to give him another electoral defeat this November because they continue to reject his extremism, his affection for violence, and his thirst for revenge. This is the left. They say that he's going to be a dictator. He admitted it, J jokingly. You know, when, when he said the dictator on day one thing, I'm like, oh, maybe he shouldn't have said that, you know. Because, uh, you know, you, you're, you're giving them fodder. But it's ridiculous. When you listen to this whole clip, it's like, dude, just say whatever you want. Because no matter what you say, the left is going to come after you with knives out. Because they will clip a minute and a half uh, segment where you're talking about the auto industry down to nine seconds and then say you're calling for political violence. This is the entire bloodbath quote. Mexico has taken over a period of 30 years, 34 percent of the automobile manufacturing business in our country. Think of it. Went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think they think that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line. And you're not going to be able to sell those guys if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. A friend right, of mine. So, so that's that's the quote. That's the quote. He's, he's talking about the auto industry. A and they clip it down to a nine second, seven second clip. And then there's a coordinated media attack on Trump. Coordinated. NBC, ABC, locally, WKRN, Trash News, uh, Politico, everybody. Did you hear what Orange Man said? Politico headline, Trump says country faces bloodbath if Biden wins in November. Oh. Is, is that what he said? Keith Oberman, I know people don't really care about Keith Oberman, but he's just another brainwashed leftist suffering from TDS. He goes on there. He says, this is a terrorist threat, FBI. This is a terrorist threat. Oh, okay. It drives me mad. But what almost makes me even more angry, like Keith Oberman is going to be Keith Oberman, right? Like, oh, I expect that out of you. You know, I, I expect it out of Keith Oberman. But you have politicians going on TV saying the exact same thing. Nancy Pelosi. I, I know, it's Nancy Pelosi. She went on ABC, uh, dressed in green, looking like a little angry ep leprechaun, uh, dressed in green Sunday morning, and uh, she, she doubles down on the bloodbath hoax. He's even predicting a bloodbath. What does that mean? He's going to exact a bloodbath? There's something wrong here. How... Um Respectful I am of the American people and their goodness. Oh, I'm so respectful of the American people, uh, says Nancy Pelosi, that she's going to lie to your face. What does this mean? Is, it, is he going to exact a bloodbath? Can you believe he said this? I mean, honestly, I, I don't even know if Nancy Pelosi listened to the whole quote. Maybe she just heard that same clip 
that every other low information Democrat heard and ran with. He's even predicting a bloodbath. What does that mean? He's going to exact a bloodbath? Ah! There's something wrong here. How um, respectful I am of the American people and their goodness. So respectful. But how much more do they have to see from him to understand that this isn't what our country is about? Praising Hitler, praising the Russians. Oh, praising them, praising them. Yep, okay. She goes on TV and she gaslights us. The fake news is gaslighting the American public. And, and honestly, I get so upset with WKRN because... I don't think people actually watch you guys for news. I don't. I think people tune in to see what the weather's going to be. And they probably follow you for, you know, tornado warnings, uh, hazardous weather. And then what they get from you is the headline that essentially Trump is calling for political violence. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. This is what we're dealing with. Unhinged. Liars. The fake news is all in on it. The Biden campaign manager went all in on it. His campaign spokesman went all in on it. Everyone. Up and down the leftist spectrum echoed this same bloodbath hoax. Trump's team claims that Trump's use of the word bloodbath was taken out of context, was he? No, this is exactly who Donald Trump is. Uh, we saw him call on uh, his supporters to storm the Capitol four years ago, and he's doubling down, promoting violence this time around. Oh, his supporters. Oh, he called on his supporters to storm the Capitol. March down there page, peacefully and patriotically and let your voices be heard. Is this taken out of context? He says, no, no, of course, of course not. Quentin folks, uh, this is the Joe Biden, uh, Junior Biden campaign spokes, spokesman. And this is just right out of the playbook. Trump is weak and deeply insecure about this election, and he's only in it for himself. Our campaign has been saying this for months, and Trump is saying the quiet part out loud. Oh, he's he's only in it for himself. Uh, well, it's it's funny you mentioned that. It's funny you mentioned that. I have I have other I have other clips from that same rally. We clinched a thing called. The Republican nomination for President of the United States. And to all Republicans, independents, and disillusioned Democrats, of which there are many, I invite you to join our movement to save our country. We're going to save our country. This is the greatest movement in the history of our country. He's only in it for himself. This is why they're terrified. They have thrown everything at this man but the kitchen sink. Two impeachments, uh, 91 charges, four indictments. Like, the list goes on and on and on, and his poll numbers go up and up and up. What can they do to stop him? They have to try everything. And yet the left will still go on TV and lie. And the people who are saying that this, his comments were taken out of context haven't said anything about all the other things that Trump has done, all the other times that he's incited political violence. And so, no, it wasn't taken out of context at all. This is who Donald Trump is, and America needs to stand up and listen to him. No, it wasn't taken out of context. This is who Donald Trump is. Yep. If you're not sufficiently angry, uh, I have more audio for more Biden surrogates. Because, you know, Joe Biden can't be trusted to hit the news circuit and do any talking for himself. Right? There's more. But trust me. There is a mountain more. 615-737-9986 if you want to join the conversation. It's a bloodbath! Ah! On Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Turn my heat on this morning. My wife said, why, why are you doing that? It was so warm yesterday. I said, I'm cold. I'm just cold. 
It's that time of year where you're turning on the heat in the morning, you're turning on the AC in the afternoon, but it is definitely time for your spring tune-up. It's time to get your system serviced the best way, the Busy Bee way with Busy Bee plumbing, heating, and cooling because you don't want to be waiting for a problem to pop up this time of year. Be proactive. Keep that unit in tip-top shape. Now, uh, you probably need that annual maintenance called Busy Bee, but if you need repair or replacement plumbing, heating, or air system, Call the guys who I trust, Busy Bee, Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Maybe you've been kicking the can down the road to repair or replace your AC since last season. I totally get that. But now's the time to do it, and you're not going to find a better value on replacement systems than with my friends at Busy Bee, Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. They offer up to 12 months with no payment, no interest, with approved credit, and it'll pay in so many ways for those added rewards and savings by signing up to be a Beehive member. They'll send you that text to remind you that it's time to get your system serviced. Plus, It'll get you that thorough annual maintenance on your plumbing, heating, air systems. No overtime charges 24-7 and 10% off all repairs plus front-of-the-line service. Busy Bee always has convenient Saturday availability for those maintenance calls, so you'll never be left waiting over the weekend. Busy Bee, they're your root pro partner for satisfaction guaranteed. Call Busy Bee Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, 615-775-7833. That's 615-775-7833. And online at BusyBeeHVAC.com.
Stop and go traffic, 65 northbound between Saturn Parkway and exit 56. That's going to be between exits 53 and exit 56 in Williamson County. Then in Goodlettsville, you got a crash blocking the left two lanes, 65 southbound at Rivergate Parkway. It's an election year, and all of a sudden, President Biden set to sign executive orders on an issue he could have tackled on day one. These stories are more at 930 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. He was busy on day one. Yeah. He- he had to ruin the country. So that was like first and foremost. Uh, Dave in Hendersonville wants to talk about the bloodbath. Ah! Dave, you're next on Super Talk. What's going on, Dave? Ah, not much, brother. What's going on? Not much. What do you think about this bloodbath hoax? Well, I mean, did you really expect them to do anything other than what they did? I mean, they, they've they done nothing since day one of him coming down the, the escalator of attacking him and lying. The left, they have nothing, and they got to pick what they can get. You yeah. Know, and, 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 of course, he doesn't help them, but that wasn't, that wasn't what he meant, and they know it. No, and, but and there's people that only listen to their side, they listen to them. They don't, they don't go, they don't try to figure out or look up any information, the truth, for themselves. So, you know, what's that say for them? Yep, I appreciate but, the call, Dave. You know, Thanks so much, man. Hey, I, hey, I've got something that's really going to tee you off. Okay. I'm and, listening. And a lot of people. Tell me. It's um, Tyson Foods. Oh, yeah. I got, I got the audio. I'm playing that later. Don't you worry. I was already, I was, I was sitting in my chair fuming last night. Oh, man. It's going to hurt my family. Oh, I'm sorry it's to hear gonna that. It's going to hurt my family because... Once the people find out about it, it I think it, it should be another uh, Bud Light situation. Yep, I'm with but, you. you know, I've got cousins and uncles that raise thousands and thousands of turkeys and chickens for Tyson. Oh, jeez. And, and I, you know, I hate it, but, you know, if I was in the... It, it puts farmers in a bad position. Yep, I, I'm with. Hurt him. I'm with you, Dave. I'm gonna be talking about that in the ten o'clock hour. The Tyson, the Tyson chicken news. I, I appreciate you bringing right, it up, I'll, brother. I'll let it stay to you then, brother. All right, man. Thanks, buddy. See ya. It's nine thirty one on Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN. I will say with Dave, as far as the bloodbath hoax goes, uh, you know, normally I, I will agree. Trump puts his foot in his mouth. This was deceitful editing by the left. Absolutely. And, and I don't think that this is the same as him giving him the ammo, being like, I will be a dictator on day one. It's like, dude, well, obviously, you're you're serving that up on a silver platter. This one was far different, and we'll we'll, we'll rehash it next after Ken Weaver's news talk. Uh, no, news talk. Newscast on Super Talk. Full forecast, traffic updates in two minutes. Russian leader Vladimir Putin declaring victory in an election there. No serious challengers facing him, but Russians around the country protested anyway. Sent in Putin's Russia, an increasingly dangerous game. The authorities clamping down, banning any candidate campaigning against Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In Russian-occupied parts of Ukraine, ballot boxes taken to people's homes under armed guard, according to Ukrainian officials. The U.S. calling the vote there blatant propaganda. Tom Sufi Burridge reporting, and it's an election year here. President Biden today going to try to win points with an executive order on health care. The White House says the executive order the president will sign today, along with nearly two dozen new actions, will be the most comprehensive set of measures ever taken to advance women's health research and innovation. The executive order will direct federal agencies to strengthen research and data standards on women's health and prioritize investments in women's health research. The executive actions will drive research into women's midlife health and diseases and conditions that are prevalent after menopause. Many of the actions announced today are contingent on Congress approving funds in next year's budget. That is the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
It's a self-fulfilling problem. You demonize, and then you, it, we call it the wrap-up smear. If you want to talk politics, you call it the wrap-up smear. You smear somebody with falsehoods and all the rest, and then you merchandise it. And then you write it, and they'll say, see, it's reported in the press that this, 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 and this. So they have that validation that the press reported the smear, and then it's called the wrap-up smear. Now I'm going to merchandise the press's report on the smear that we made. And it's, it's a tactic, and it's, it's, it's self-evident. But I think I'm worth the trouble. So. It's called the wrap-up smear. It's, it's a, you want to talk politics? Who wants to talk politics? Raise your hand. So it's a wrap-up smear. This bloodbath hoax, Nancy Pelosi explained it perfectly. It's called, it's called the wrap-up smear. You make a claim, you guys report it, then you know you double down on the other reporting. Everybody's doing the, the circular citations, right? It's a wrap-up smear. But it didn't stop the fake news this weekend from going all in. All in on the bloodbath hoax. We begin tonight with the race for the White House and former President Trump's campaign now on the defensive after his fiery rhetoric at a rally in Dayton, Ohio on Saturday night. Trump warning while discussing the economy that there would be a, quote, bloodbath if he is not reelected in November. This after the former president kicked off the event by paying tribute to those who attacked the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. President Biden's campaign swiftly denouncing those comments as threats of political violence. Oh, I'm sorry, did she say that uh, the Trump team is on the defensive? Did, they're on the defensive? That's weird. So I have a true social post here from Donald Trump. Does this sound like, you tell me, you tell me if this sounds like they're on the defensive. Okay? The fake news media and their Democrat partners in the destruction of our nation pretended to be shocked at my use of the word bloodbath, even though they fully understood that I was simply referring to imports allowed by crooked Joe Biden, which are killing the automobile industry, the United Auto Workers, but not their leadership fully understand what I mean. With the electric car mandate being pushed by Biden, there soon won't be any cars made in the USA unless I'm elected president, in which case auto manufacturing will thrive like never before. MAGA 2024. Yeah, that was uh, that was offense. That was Mahomes esque offense. All right, enough with the <laughs> references. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't have asked you if I knew you were going to bring a Chiefs reference into this. Fine, Tom Brady esque offense. All right, base. You're right. There you go. Base. Didn't Brady have a MAGA hat in his locker? Uh, I think at one point he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Base. Early on, yeah. Mahomes never had no MAGA hat. <laughs> no, no, he would not. Nope. Nope. Such a loser. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Move on. Right. You brought it up. Why do you what do you want Why me to I do? Why did I do this? Why did you want I'm not allowed to talk about it anymore? <laughs> All right, let's talk yeah. Mike Pence. <laughs> let's go on, let's go down the Mike Pence road. There you did you go. do this on yeah, purpose? Yes, I'm like did. a dog or like a cat with the laser light? Exactly. Is that what you're doing to me? Exactly. Mike Pence uh, disowns Trump over his his oh the J6 prisoners are hostages. I can't believe he said that. These violent insurrectionists. In a crowd full of Antifa and feds. <laughs> and then we just ignore the fact. We we just totally ignore the fact that uh, you know. Reporters who didn't even enter the building are being arrested in Biden's America. Unreal. Uh, Sarah McAbee, friend of the show, her husband was one of those violent insurrectionists. Uh, I got a text from her last night. They said they finally sentenced him, her husband, um, after months of waiting, right? Jeez. Months of waiting. Uh, so he's got, he, got sentenced, um, he got sentenced on February 29th to 70 months, almost, what, six years? Am I doing wow, the math right? Wow, yeah. Ugh. For what should have been a, a misdemeanor. Dang. Yeah, it's going to be five years. Five years. Right? I think I so. Know. Math is hard. Yeah, I don't know. Math is hard. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is six years. I did I did 72 would be the thing, right? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, almost what six years. What was that? Say that one more time. No, no, no. I wanted the part about me. <laughs> no, that's all you get. All right. Uh, so Sarah McAbee says he's going to get credit for the 31 months that he served. So he was sitting there waiting to be sentenced for 31 months. And you're telling me that these people aren't hostages? I'm, so I'm sorry. I thought this was America. So 
I don't like Mike Pence either. Then the super text were asked about that too. On the Members Nutrition Super Text line? Yeah, we had uh, 4559 on the Members oh, yeah. Nutrition Super Text line. Hey, Chris, need an honest answer from you. What do you think of Trump stating that he will pardon the J6 quote unquote hostages? I think the final nail in Trump's coffin is the fact that Mike Pence stated emphatically that he will not support Trump. Says it all. Bye, Trump. Oh, yeah. <laughs> our, our support for Trump <laughs> was hinged on Mike Pence, right? Uh, so, uh, listen. I think a good majority of the J6ers need to be pardoned. Maybe 90, 95, 99% of them. Case by case, needs to be gone through, vetted, verified. Um, but, like, who are you kidding? There were, there were Black Lives Matter rioters that sued the cities uh, where they rioted and got awarded millions of dollars. Not even close. Not even close. What about the the Palestinian protesters that invade state capitals every single week? It's garbage. Garbage. Uh, all right, so the Biden campaign manager also doubled down on the bloodbath hoax. If you're just joining us, uh, they, they took a Trump quote out of context to just allow this part to be said. The left did. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole... That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. Ah! So in the full quote, he's talking about the auto industry. Talking about putting tariffs on China, not letting cars be built in Mexico and China. But it's going to be a bloodbath, right? It's going to be an absolute bloodbath. It's ridiculous. Biden campaign manager doubled down on the hoax. I mean, what I heard was a continuation of the same rhetoric, the same endorsement of political violence that we've seen from Donald Trump for years, as you pointed out. It goes even farther back, right? This is the same guy who, after Nazis marched on Charlottesville and killed a woman, said there were very fine people on both sides. Okay, oh, we're back to Charlottesville. This is what inspired Joe Biden to run in 2020 was the Charlottesville hoax. So the campaign manager is going out there and spouting even more lies. He's doubling down on a much larger lie, the Charlottesville hoax. So I just wanted to also point out that this, this playbook has been ran before. And they did this to Trump the last time with the Charlottesville hoax, which uh, in case you're keeping score at home, I wanted to replay the highlight of that for you as well. Very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group. Excuse me. Excuse me. I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? I do love okay, Thomas good. Jefferson. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now, are we going to take down his statue? <laughs> so you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. So, I mean, the, the Biden campaign manager goes on TV and just doubles down, bringing up another hoax that the left has pushed and pushed and pushed. You know, during the 2020 Democratic primary, where, you know, Joe was inspired to run because of the Charlottesville hoax, uh, Joe Biden warned against a bloodbath in the Democratic primary between himself and Bernie Sanders as they attacked each other in a bid for the presidential nomination. He said, what we can't let happen is let this primary become a negative bloodbath. So he said to a group of donors during his campaign, was that, was that calling for uh, political violence? Of course not. The, the media, the media does the bloodbath stuff all the time. Everyone says it on the left, on the right, whether you're talking about politics, whether you're talking about elections, whether you're talking about Taylor Swift, they all say bloodbath over and over and over. But as Politico.com reports tonight on the, quote, bloodbath at the RNC, 
Headlines calling it a, quote, bloodbath. Be a bloodbath. Not only is it going to be a bloodbath, but after they leave New Hampshire, it's a bloodbath on her home turf. That's really and tough. Trump has left a lot of corpses in his wake. I mean, we yeah. can count the bodies as part of the, quote, MAGA drive to take over Maricopa County. And the headline refers to it as an impending bloodbath. Columnist Charles Blow has a new piece for The New York Times entitled A Biden Bloodbath. 2018 midterms, you can bet that they 100% are fearing a slaughter. In fact, yeah. the word bloodbath. Yeah and massacre come up frequently. The Republican Party will be destroyed. It's going to be a bloodbath. There's going to be a bloodbath one way or the other. Bloodbath blood bath for Bernie Sanders. It's been a bloodbath there, shaping up to be a bloodbath. Head off a bloodbath in next year's crucial midterm. Off-year elections are often a bloodbath. This week's bloodbath for Democrats. A bloodbath at the ballot box. There could be a Republican bloodbath. They'll talk about a bloodbath. So, what, Joy Reid, Neil Cavuto, Trey Gallagher... Rachel Maddow. I, but wait, but but wait, there's more. It's a bloodbath. I have to talk about you. And it's going to be a bloodbath all day long. Is in for a bloodbath? Has it been a bloodbath on the way down? With Donald Trump bloodbath be a bloodbath predicted to be a bloodbath may not be the bloodbath it would be a bloodbath more of a bloodbath. It's going to be a bloodbath in November. Possible Biden bloodbath this November. A bloodbath on Wall Street. There's going to be a bloodbath in, in Alabama into a bloodbath. Obviously, there was a bloodbath. It was a bloodbath. We're down 800 points. This bloodbath at Department of Homeland Security. And it's a bloodbath today. There was going to be this bloodbath. Election bloodbath. It, it could be a bloodbath for them. Bloodbath, possibly. Bloodbath that went through with the Attorney General. Bloodbath 99 days out. The bloodbath is going to look like presided over a bloodbath in the diplomatic corps. Absolute, in my opinion, blood blood. blood bloodbath the democrats are on a ticket sales turned into a bloodbath ticket sales for singer taylor swift's latest tour it's safe to say the fans had a, a bloodbath for the company after the fiasco put the taylor swift one in for you <laughs> just a little touch for me that was it yeah probably could have ended it like 20 seconds sooner <laughs> that one's gotta stay that one's gotta stay it's a bloodbath <laughs> oh yeah yeah you know they ignore all the other stuff he said at the at the rally in ohio the radical left democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020 and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024 I'm not going to allow it to happen it's 952 on super talk 99.7 wtn Hey, wherever you get your vitamins and supplements, are you sure that they're being made in America? Uh, you're probably not sure, especially if you're just grabbing them off of store shelves like I was doing. Hey, it's Chris Hand for my friends at MembersNutrition.com. You can be sure that when you're getting your supplements and your vitamins and, and your weight loss stuff, your immunity supplements, all of that at MembersNutrition.com, that they are made in the USA. Not way overseas in a different country, but right here in America. You've heard about me talking about the youthful cleanse by Daily Defense. I did that again over the weekend. Feel great. But Members Nutrition is bringing tons of affordable and quality supplements to you ahead uh, to you uh, at a fraction of the normal retail cost. And they're made in the USA. So no matter what you're taking, is it just like men's health, general women's health, relaxation supplements, immunity supplements, weight loss, detox like the cleanse? Uh, MembersNutrition.com has it all. And it's all made in America. And right now at MembersNutrition.com, they're so proud of their supplements that they're going to give you an extra 50% off their already discounted prices. You are not going to find a better deal on vitamins and supplements anywhere else than MembersNutrition.com. Right now, an extra 50% off, and you don't need a promo code. You don't. There's, there's no extra steps. No promo code needed. The discount is automatically applied at checkout. Go now to membersnutrition.com for your vitamins and supplements. That's membersnutrition.com.
Supreme Court hears arguments about social media today. We'll tell you what the impact could be coming up at 10 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. You know, I, I think I I think I figured out why they're pushing the, the hoax so much. I think I got it. What's that? Do you remember do you remember what Kamala Harris said about uh, 18 to 24 year olds? What's the other thing we know about this population? And it's a specific phase of life. Remember, age is more than a chronological fact. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. <laughs> that is why we put them in dormitories and they have a resident assistant. They make really bad decisions. Like, like voting blue. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, boy, I think uh, that ought to be run over and over and over again. Also, she's talking about how that's what they have residents, resident assistance. RAs are like 21. Yeah. <laughs> Weird, right? <laughs> you wouldn't have a 25-year-old RA. Hey, no. She's got her finger on the and pulse. And it's a specific phase of life. <laughs> Remember, age is more than a chronological fact. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. So let's just repeat a lie over and over and over. Yeah. Until they believe it, right? Yeah. It's 10 o'clock on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Ten o'clock on the dot. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. We've got the full forecast in two minutes. And today in our nation's capital, Stephen Portnoy covering the Supreme Court, which will hear arguments over whether the government's gone too far in its efforts to have certain posts taken down from social media. The case involves efforts by the Biden and Trump administrations to apply pressure on social media companies to remove a range of content from the disinformation posts of foreign bots to negative comments about covid vaccines. Lower courts have held that the encouragement of the government to remove the posts amounted to unconstitutional coercion. But the Biden administration says no sanctions against the companies were ever applied or even threatened. And it is an election year. President Biden's chosen today, after nearly four years in office, to sign executive orders to help women. This includes research around menopause and conditions like osteoporosis that are more likely to occur after menopause. All of this coming amid an election year. As the election heats up and the president, he's trying to position himself as a champion of women's health and blaming Donald Trump for taking away women's reproductive rights. But President Biden, he's also urging Congress to step in to close that medical research gap. He's urging Congress to approve $12 billion in new funding for women's health research. That's Selena Wang reporting. And just as the busy travel season starts up, air safety scares have the leader of one major U.S. carrier reassuring passengers. United Airlines CEO is reassuring customers the airline is safe. The message went out this morning after a series of high-profile incidents including a flight that landed in Medford, Oregon, with an external panel missing. Recent flights experienced hydraulic failures. CEO Scott Kirby told customers the company made recent changes to emphasize flight safety, writing, quote, everyone on our team is working together to keep you safe on your trip. That is Brian Clark reporting. And the latest news, weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
10.05 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. Uh, you might have heard Dave from Hendersonville call a little while ago. Remember Dave? He brought up Tyson Chicken. Dave, yeah, 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 yeah. I was wondering about that. Okay. Um, I I want to launch a new boycott. Okay, let's get let's go. Monday's the best day to do it. Let's get everyone gathered around. Yeah, that way it's like you're planning out your yes. grocery list for the week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, all right. What was the other one that we banned? Oh, yeah, Bud Light. I don't uh, drink. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah you don't even one. have to worry about that. Yeah. yeah. I boycotted them years ago. <laughs> that was my decision-making that made me ban them. But uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so Tyson Foods. You know Tyson. Absolutely. The chicken, the tendies. Yeah, little chicken tenders, chicken yeah. nuggets. Yeah. Not doing it. Wow, okay, what'd they do this time? Okay, so uh, they're laying off Americans. Oh. And they're hiring illegal aliens. Great, I'm out. Yeah, it's pretty easy, right? Easy enough. Sounds good. So Tyson Tyson Foods announced they're they're closing down an Iowa pork factory. It's going to lead to a thousand lost jobs. Wow. Um, and then uh, they also met with and hired uh, migrants in Manhattan. Newcomers. Newcomers. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't funny. Like I'm actually angry. No, about no, this. no. That's, Don't that's, make me yeah. laugh. Sorry, sorry. Stay on task. Yes, yes sir. This is a boycott, not a joke. <laughs> All right, so uh, Tyson, they they announced that they're going to close down an Iowa pork factory. Okay, it's going to cost a thousand Americans jobs. Meanwhile, they go to Manhattan and they decide uh, we're going to hire uh, we're going to hire these newcomers in Manhattan. And you know where they're going to bring them? Oh, they're going to bring them to Tennessee. Oh, awesome! It's exactly that's exactly what we wanted. Right? Uh, so they're going to cost Americans jobs in Iowa, and then they're going to cost American jobs in Tennessee. They, they announced uh, that they're going to join the Tent Partnership for Refugees. And they're going to staff uh, from, the, from uh, uh, asylum seekers at the New York office. They're going to they're, they're hire at least 87 migrants from Central and South America. The same report uh, said that Tyson employs about 42,000 immigrants. And the company's corporate social responsibility executive said we'd like to employ another 42,000 if we could find them. A, a corporate, a corporate social responsibility executive. A corporate social responsibility executive. This is what the news said about uh, Tyson in Tennessee from uh, the Scripps Network. They, they are not only going to be hiring them, uh, but they're going to be giving them tons of benefits to come to Humboldt, Tennessee. They want to retain those workers by providing benefits such as temporary housing, a relocation stipend, part-time off to a better acclimate to their new lives. And em uh, employees will also receive on-site child care and transportation as well as paid time off, off to attend court hearings. And they're also saying that they're allocating $1.5 million to help them with legal services. Tonight at 8, we're going to take a closer look at my colleague Megan Smith and I at what the process looks like for migrants, 48 hours after they arrived into the city of New York. Chris. So 48 hours after they arrived in the city of New York, they're going to be basically shipping them out to Tennessee. And Tyson Chicken's going to give them uh, paid time off to deal with court cases. They're going to help them pay for legal fees. Unbelievable. Tyson Chicken. Stop buying it. Seriously. They are going to give better benefits to illegal aliens than they would give to any American worker. Do, do you think that they would give an American worker time off to deal with court cases? <laughs> are you kidding? Child care paid time off to get acclimated? The good, good thing that they have a corporate social responsibility executive, uh, you know, trying to employ all these illegal aliens. In response to the news, uh, J.D. Vance said companies who lay off Americans while seeking foreign nationals for open pos positions should face congressional scrutiny. He said, we're certainly going to look into whether that can change that ability, assuming Tyson is operating legally, Vance told Jesse Waters in, on primetime on Thursday. He said, all we know is that they're firing American workers and hiring illegal aliens to replace them. 
And this is the entire point of illegal immigration. Replacement, right? Oh, the replacement theory. You're so racist for bringing it up. Again, they're going to be firing Americans and hiring illegal aliens. And they're bringing them to Tennessee. Awesome. Anthony, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, man? How you doing, Chris? Good. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Hey, so the, the this Tyson thing, uh, people, people, if you're actually, if you're really going to boycott Tyson, make sure to do your research. They have their hand in a lot of things. I mean, it, it, it's more than just chicken, too. They have their... They have their tentacles and beef as well. I mean, you got, I, uh, I think it's IBP beef, um, and there's a couple other brands, but if you're going to actually boycott them, um, make sure you do your research. It, it was kind of like the Budweiser thing when people were like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to stop drinking Bud Light, but I'm going to go to Michelob Ultra. I'm like, dude, that's the, it's that's still, the, yeah, it's that's still the, InBev. InBev. Yeah, that's the InBev umbrella. Um, also, I will say at the Tyson plant there in Shelbyville, um, I'm pretty sure they they've already been hiring illegals. They because they used to deliver their food to their cafeteria, and I can assure you, nobody in there spoke a lick of English. And I mean, it ranged from Spanish to French to yeah. That I mean, they they're already practicing hiring illegals. I mean, now nah, I'm I'm not going to say that all of them were illegal because I mean, hey, some of them might be legit, have you know work visas, but yeah. um, I can assure you they were not. Uh, American born. Well, and but, yeah, that was just kind of my thing. No, I, I appreciate the call. And I'm, listen, I'm fine with making the list longer. I'm, I have no issue with that. So I, I appreciate that. And you're absolutely right. The, the InBev thing was, was frustrating because it's like, oh, let's move from Bud Light to another InBev beverage. I get it. But there is some power in destroying a brand. And this isn't this isn't new news for Tyson. In 2019, immigration authorities rounded up hundreds of workers in a massive sweep at seven Mississippi food processing plants um, via uh, Tyson. Tyson. They, they, they've been doing this for a long time. Bill and Franklin, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Bill? Yes, sir. I'd like to speak on the same subject. Um, since... Tennessee and Nashville and the whole area is not are not designated um, sanctuary cities or sanctuary states. How can they hire these people legally and have them work here? I, I really find that very disturbing, and I wonder if we can get a push to get the governor involved with this and have him say, no way, Jose. No, I mean, I, I think we should. But, I mean, this is this is where we're at. You know, it's like they're they're literally – bragging about it on news in New York that not only are they going to be sending them to Tennessee, but they're going to be giving them paid time off to uh, take care of their court cases and helping them with up to a million and a half dollars for those court fees. I'm familiar with the whole story. I've been following it very closely. So has my wife. And um, according to some sources, even uh, a lot of the fast food places get their chicken from Tyson. I don't know if that's true or not. We couldn't confirm it. No, I mean, they say that approximately 20% of the beef, pork, and chicken in the United States are under the Tyson brand. 20%. Yep. So it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me if a lot of the fast food or if, like, Cisco was sending it to restaurants. It wouldn't It wouldn't surprise me in the least. Okay. Hey, Thank hey. you very much. Chris. Yeah, man. Appreciate, day. appreciate the call. Yeah, I mean, they, under the Tyson umbrella, you got Tyson, Jimmy Dean, Hillshire Farm, Ballpark, Wright, yep. Adels, and State Fair brands. It's crazy. Uh, and it turns out uh, the very same Tyson food that manufactures uh, dinosaur nuggets, you know, the, the yeah, dino oh, yeah, nugs, the dino nugs, yeah. Uh, also manufacture chicken products for chains like Taco Bell, KFC, McDonald's, Burger King, Popeyes, and Chick-fil-A. Got a lot of boycotting to do. Yeah, that's a lot. To be fair, in this economy, boycotts are only going to save us money. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. You know what I mean? Uh, with the Bidenomics doing the working, uh, this is actually, boycotting is actually a pretty good uh, step towards saving money. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, what Tyson does to their, I mean, there's already been documentaries done on Tyson for years, but what they do to their chickens, I mean, it's disgusting. It's very highly processed and it's torturous. And what, what do they do? Oh, I mean, they're, they're, I mean, they're just not properly sedating these chickens. They're ripping off their legs. They've got, you know, 
machines, you know, hanging them by live and then tearing them apart. I mean, it's really gross and nasty and, and not sanitary and very highly processed. And what documentary? As I can look it up. It's it was it was when I was, I mean, when I was a kid, this was a thing. I would I would watch that. <laughs> An, under, an undercover investigation at Tyson's Food. Uh, I can get the name here. Yeah, gonna need gonna need that. Probably not on Netflix. Pro- probably <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably not something you'd find on Prime Video. I think it's Food Evolution. Oh, and, it, and it, yeah, and it goes through goes through Tyson and a couple other companies where it's like, yo, you shouldn't be shouldn't be eating this. So you're in on the boycott with me. Yeah, I can I can get I can get by. I already don't eat Tyson chicken, so yeah, let's go. I'm in. Yeah. I'll right. make I'll make a point to avoid it. All right. And we have to make a point to avoid uh the the brands underneath it. Jimmy Dean, yep. Hillshire Farm, Ballpark, right, Adels, and State Fair. Hillshire's gonna be the only one I'm gonna have trouble with. The rest of that's easy. What do you do from Hillshire? I think like turkey and ham. Dude, there's so Yeah, there's so many other brands. I can find another brand. I'm not worried about it. Easy. I saw a ballpark. I'm like, I'm a Nathan's guy anyway. Moving on. But yeah, man, Tyson Chicken. Tyson Chicken. They're laying off American workers and they're hiring illegal aliens. How do you feel about this? 615 737 9986. I got to be honest with you, it absolutely infuriates me. This is, this is the replacement theory in action. They're taking American jobs and they're filling them with illegal aliens. Donald in the borough, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Donald? Uh, I was just talking about Tyson food. I was going to call in and say uh, you're talking about a documentary. One of them that I like showing is uh, Super Size Me Too. Super Size Me Too? Yeah. Is it? Does it go into that? Uh, it goes into how the chickens are raised and everything, yeah. All right, perfect. I'll, I'll check that out. I, I know Super Size Me 1. I I've never seen Super Size Me 2. So it's not the same guy, but he does, uh, he starts his own chicken farm and everything. It shows what they go through and everything as the farmers and as they're processing the chickens and everything. Interesting. Appreciate the call, Donald. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, man, you too. 615 737 9986. Tyson Chicken. They're bringing illegal aliens to Tennessee from New York. They're migrants newcomers they're going to give them paid time off for their court cases they're going to bring up to a million and a half dollars uh for their their court cases from from tyson they're gonna give them time off to get acclimated to tennessee and uh you know their what was the guy's title their uh corporate social responsibility executive said we'd like to employ another forty two thousand if we could find them well, they're they're going to New York to find them. Andy in Shelbyville, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Andy? Hey, good morning. This is nothing new right here. Tyson Foods in Shelbyville got busted for this like in the nineties. It was so bad that some of the higher ups who were gonna to go to jail for this, like one guy ended up killing himself. So they emptied out the entire all the employees who worked there. This is in the nineties and hired all illegal immigrants. Then when they got in trouble, they got rid of all the illegal immigrants and brought in Somalians. So, hey, you know what? Tyson Foods just should not be in your grocery cart. No, I, I'm with you, man. Tyson Foods isn't going to be in my grocery cart. Thanks for the call, Andy. Hank in Nashville, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Hank? Hey, Chris, I'm with you 100% on that. I live in Goodlettsville. There's a Tyson plant on my way to work. They're all from somewhere else because none of them know how to negotiate a four-way stop. Let me tell you that much. <laughs> and uh, I can tell you one more thing, something to watch. Pull up the Clinton Chronicles, that old thing about Bill and Hillary. Yeah. Watch the watch the Clinton Chronicles and think about it. And it'll tell you how much Don Tyson's tied in with that bunch. Oh, perfect. You know, these kind of guys, they keep good company, right? Yeah, he's. If you watch the Clinton Chronicles, he's right in there, deep in there with the Clintons in Arkansas before he ever got big. Appreciate the call, Hank. Thanks, man. All right. Yeah, uh, you know, and like personally, like a lot of times, I would see this kind of stuff and be like, "Listen, I don't want to cost American jobs, right?" Like, and I sort of felt that way about Bud Light, and I got a lot of that perspective from guys that were working there. Um, I I don't buy it. I still wouldn't suggest that you buy it. 
and I think it's sending a message that, that we're not going to tolerate this as Americans. But when it comes to Tyson, it's like they're actively laying off Americans for illegal aliens. It's in black and white. They're closing a pork factory in Iowa, getting rid of a thousand jobs, right? And then they're hiring illegal aliens from Manhattan to bring them to Tennessee. They're they're replacing you anyway. So it's not like we're going to be losing American jobs. It's just when do we lose them? Rocco and Lewisburg, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Rocco? Hey, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? Anyway, I'm, you know, I'm good. But uh, I grew up about, uh, I'd say about 20 minutes away from the town that they had that big ice bust in Mississippi. And their big their big argument against that was, they're just taking the jobs that you don't want. Don't worry about them being illegal. They're just taking the jobs that you you wouldn't want anyway. Let me tell you, when that happened, there were so many people that went and applied for a job and got a job that couldn't find work anywhere else. And let me tell you, it's a good paying job. And they're, they're just trying to save, a, you know, like Tyson's just trying to save a buck hiring illegals. But, you know, when when people saw those positions open, they ran to it, yeah. and they would. And you know, like the the economy, the way you know the the way it is in Mississippi, it's very you know like you're lucky if you're getting over seven twenty five an hour. So when people when they were hiring people for eleven dollars an hour, man, there was people that would do some questionable things for eleven dollars an hour down there. You know? Yeah, I, I so hear you, man. It's not like nobody want doesn't want it. I, I get it, Rocco. I appreciate the call, man. Thanks. And, and they're they're probably going to be getting paid a lot more than that in this day and age. Charity, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Charity? Um, hi. Um, so I've got a unique perspective. Uh, first of all, um, my ex father in law. I'm, I'm not sure if he is anymore or not, but he used to be the superintendent of the wastewater there, and there was constantly ammonia spills, and they didn't get rid of none of that chicken. And at one point, there was one so bad that it nearly killed him. Like, he couldn't breathe and was coughing up blood. Jeez. But then I, you know, even though, you know, um, I knew him and was able to get a job there, it took forever. And we would stand in knee-deep water, blood and feces and guts, and cut this chicken up. And the USDA would be doing cocaine in the bathroom huh. and not check the chicken. I'm serious. And then in the mornings when, you know, everybody would come into work, They'd come in in U-Hauls, old U-Hauls, and roll the back up, and all these illegals would come out. Come out, and there were so many illegals hired. Nobody, even my supervisor, couldn't speak English, and they were all illegal. That's crazy. And the USDA, USDA, I will, I will put my hand on the Bible. They were sitting around doing nothing. They were all on drugs, or they were just getting paid to look the other way. And we were standing in. They, they made us buy waiters, so that you know. We weren't standing in feces and water and blood while we were cutting this chicken up that everybody, I won't eat Tyson's. I used to work there. I only worked there for a few weeks. It was so toxic and so disgusting. I was like, I can't, I can't work here. It's, it's awful. Hey, I appreciate the call, it's, Charity. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh-huh. Bye. All right. Well, Charity sold me on the boycott more than anybody else. Just, just her going, I worked there for a few weeks and I won't. That, that, to me, says everything, right? That's all you need to know. Yeah. Uh, other stuff aside, you know I love my anecdotal evidence, but other stuff aside, <laughs> when you hear an employee say, I worked there for a few weeks, and I'll never eat Tyson chicken. Oh. Good to know. 1024 on Super Talk, 99.7 WTN. Hey, it's Chris Hand for my friends at United Structural System. It is that time of year where the water is going to be falling from the sky. People call it rain. Uh, and that rain is going to get into your home one way or another. Your crawl space, your basement, you're going to be dealing with it. And if you are dealing with it, the guys to call are United Structural Systems. They are your waterproofing experts. Now, after we're our next rainstorm, do, do yourself a favor. If you haven't been in your crawl space in a while, poke your head down there. Uh, are you noticing standing water? 
in your crawl space? Have you seen wet basement walls, cracks in your basement floors, that musty odor coming up from your crawl space? Those are all signs that you could have a waterproofing issue, and the guys at United Structural Systems will come out and create a custom plan to waterproof your crawl space or basement. They've been doing it in Middle Tennessee since 1994. They're your waterproofing experts. They aren't going anywhere, and they won't leave until you're satisfied and the work is done. And when they do leave, after they waterproof your basement or your crawl space, the warranty stays for life. Even if you leave the property, the warranty stays. They have 25,000 satisfied customers that will back them up. United Structural Systems, give them a call today, 615-488-7855. That's 615-488-7855 or online at USSTN.com. Hear from the TikTokers who found missing college student Riley Strain's bank card coming up at 1030 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. That's the craziest story. The TikTokers find the bank card? Or where were the police? Right? Like, wouldn't you think the police would find it first? And you want TikTok to be gone. I didn't want TikTok <laughs> no, to be gone. Kidding. I just don't <laughs> like TikTok. I don't want the government getting all in the mix. No, that's that's fair. Don't get me off track. <laughs> All right. We're talking about Tyson Chicken. Uh, apparently, they're importing illegal aliens to Tennessee to take American jobs. Meanwhile, throughout the country, uh, they're closing down factories and laying off Americans. Uh, this is hitting a chord with a lot of people because there's so many Tyson plants in Tennessee, and everybody has their own perspective and story to share. Jerry and Pulaski, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Jerry? Good morning. How's it going today? What's up, man? How are you? Well, I'm still on the green side of the grass, so it's a wonderful day. I like that. I can give you a little history on Tyson. It goes back about 40 years, if you're interested. Yeah, let's do it real quick. When I moved back home to Nashville in the 1980s after spending some time in California, I worked with several people around the Nashville area who had family members who worked for Tyson. Up around the Gallatin, Springfield, um up there, up there area just northeast of Nashville. Yep. At that time, 40 years ago, most of Tyson's workers were illegals. 
all the grocery stores in those areas that the near the Tyson processing plant had several aisles dedicated to Hispanic foods. Really? Now, I seriously doubt that Tennessee hillbillies like Menudo and, and Tortillas and and uh, three, or three or four aisles of the local grocery store dedicated to nothing but Hispanic foods. Interesting. That, that was happening in the 1980s. Crazy. So there's, not, there's nothing new or nothing unusual about Tyson running their facilities with illegal labor. Hey, I, I appreciate the call, and, and it seems like uh, you're on point with just about everybody else on the Super Tax line. Thanks for the call, Jerry. I got a text here from 6310 said, if Tyson and illegals were an issue, why was it not stopped over 30 years ago? I don't know. That's a good question. You, you see numerous busts, Mississippi in 2019. But I, I, one of the things that really bugs me right now is that they're closing plants, losing thousands of jobs, what I would think are Americans' jobs, and now they're importing these same illegal aliens, the newcomers, into Tennessee. They're giving them time off for their immigration court cases, and they're even helping pay for them. And this was all announced by their uh, corporate social responsibility executive. Uh, we'll take more calls on Tyson next. If you guys want to chime in, 615-737-9986. It's 1031 on Super Talk. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Full forecast in two minutes. Russian leader Vladimir Putin declaring victory in an election there. No serious challengers facing him. Here's Tom Sufi Burridge. His victory was never in doubt. He is now the longest serving Russian or Soviet leader since Stalin. The White House calling the election obviously not free nor fair. Now here in Nashville, Riley Strain's bank card has been found by a pair of women live streaming on TikTok. Looking along the banks of the Cumberland River where the 22-year-old college student was last known to be. There is so much trash down there and it's it's so much to sit through there are so many pieces of clothing shoes bottles cans everything i don't really know how we found it, it i would love to say yeah. just dumb luck divine intervention it was just sitting there meanwhile authorities say a body found floating in the river near the mlk bridge is not strain or that of missing 15 year old sebastian rogers the autistic teenager not seen in sumner county since february 6th that's the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN. We struck a chord with this Tyson chicken stuff, huh? So Tyson chicken laying off American workers, importing illegal aliens from Manhattan, uh, newcomers, if you will, to Tennessee. In, in case you missed it, this was this was how they covered it in New York. They want to retain those workers by providing benefits such as temporary housing, a relocation stipend, part-time off to a better acclimate to their new lives. And uh, employees will also receive on-site child care and transportation as well as paid time off, off to attend court hearings. And they're also saying that they're allocating $1.5 million to help them with legal services. So now at 8, we're going to take a closer look. A million and a half for their court hearings. Transportation to and from work, corporate housing, a travel stipend to relocate, PTO to get better acclimated to Tennessee. What? Is there a job that offers Americans these type of benefits? Seriously. Don't worry, though. Uh, this has all been stamped by the uh, Tyson Corporate Social Responsibility Executive. So it's got to be on the up and up, right? What do you go to school for to become a corporate social responsibility executive? Do you know? I don't know. College is a scam. <laughs> it is. Don't laugh at me. Mac didn't even turn on his mic for that one. So somebody, uh, my friend on Twitter, sent me uh, this, this guy publishing ONB. He sent me a, a list of all the brands for Tyson. So if you want to know what, what brands they have... Now, I retweeted it. Go to at Chris Hand on air, and you can find uh, all the brands that, that you may want to boycott. I got to tell you, I was looking at this list, and I'm reading through it. And I'm like, please don't say Jenny O's. Please don't say Jenny O's. Please don't say Jenny O's. Okay, I'm good. I'm in the clear. I got to have my cracked, uh, <laughs> my cracked pepper turkey breast. <laughs> so it's a lot, of li a lot of brands on this list. Yep. Sarah Lee. Tyson, Jimmy Dean, Hillshire Farm, Ballpark. I mean, some of them I've never heard of. Like Moms. Have you heard of Like Yeah, I Moms? saw that on the list, too. I'm like, what? Yeah, there were a few on there that I'd never heard of. But those first three or four, it's a big brands. I mean, Jimmy I, Dean. I wouldn't even buy something that said Like Moms. I'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> False advertising. This is what some of these I wouldn't even do. Uh, but a lot of people want to chime in on this. Let's go to David in Nashville. You're next on Tyson Chicken. What's up, Dave? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I can't remember what year it was. It was either the late 90s, about 8, 98, 99, or about 2000, where there was an incident in local news here in Nashville, it was in the newspaper, television, everything, where I believe it was uh, the plant they had uh, in McMinnville or near McMinnville, where they found that they had somebody high up, that would go in the van or a couple of vans, like a caravan, head down to southern Texas, pick up people, drive them up here, and give them jobs. And I know it was all over the news, and, and I think, I believe, the man that was doing that, he became an, like an executive. I believe he fired or possibly arrested for bringing in illegals that didn't even have work permits. But you can research it because it was right here in the Nashville News constantly for quite a few months. Dude, there are like horror stories coming out of this these Tyson plants. You're, you're oh, not yeah, the like only the, one sharing this kind of stuff. It's insane. Oh yeah, and like the gentleman said about Goodlettsville, you know, I go through there every day just about using my motorcycle. But there's a plant back there. I doubt if any of them can speak English. A lot of them just come speeding through the stop signs around there at, at shift change, and uh, it's like I guess what nobody born and raised in the United States, black, white, brown, yellow, red skin. I don't care. None of them are allowed to have jobs. It's only these people where they have car loads of them, probably just like the, they all share rent on a house. So you have 10 people living in a house together, but they're, they're coming and going there all the time. That's crazy. Thanks for the call, Dave. I appreciate it, man. All right. Thank you. Take care. Yeah, you too. Uh, let's go to Terry in Nashville. You're next on Super Talk. What's up, Terry? Hey, good morning. Um, I called the governor's office on this, and Based. of course I was assured that uh, Tennessee would, would not be doing this, and... Um, of course, I didn't get very far. I left my name and phone number and asked for a phone call back. And I was told, well, I'm not really sure that uh, you will, but I will be sure to pass your message along. 
I'm like, this This is not what I elected someone to be put in office for, for me to just throw up my arms and say, okay, whatever you do is good. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'm so with I you, Terry. And, like, this company is, they're not just uh, hiring illegals. They're they're paying the fees for their court fines. They're giving them corporate housing. They're giving them paid time off for their court cases. They're giving them child care. They're giving them rides to and from work. Like, this is above and beyond what a normal company would do for a normal employee. Yes, I listed all those things, and I, I, he wouldn't give me his last name. His first name was Austin, so I assured Austin I'll be calling back. Yeah, I think everybody because, should be calling the governor's office. I appreciate you, I, Terry. That's absolutely based. So please do so, and please boycott these Tyson food products. Yep, and if you want a list of – thank you, Terry. If you want a list of the Tyson food products, uh, I retweeted it. One of my friends said it to me on Twitter. Just go to at Chris Hand on air. There's a whole gang of them. Rob in the borough, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Rob? Hey, how you doing? I appreciate you having me on. I used to work up at the Tyson facility in Shelbyville a few years back. And I'll tell you, all the reasons y'all are covering to boycott them, I got even better one. Just the way they treat their people. It's, I mean, there's mold in the bathroom. It's just disgusting. And there's no quality of life there. I mean, people, everybody that works there is just miserable. They hate their lives. They hate themselves. The way management treats you is just, it's just utter garbage, to be honest with you. I don't even know how they're still in business, how they have anybody. They have to resort to illegals. The way they treat their American citizen employees is well, disgusting. Well, let me ask you a couple questions, and I think I know the answer to the first one. Are you an American citizen, Rob? I am. Okay. Uh, have you ever been given paid time off for court cases from Tyson? I have not. Were you ever given corporate housing from Tyson? That's a negative, sir. Were you ever given a ride to and from work on their on their dime? I was not, and I was also in the army. And yes. they don't care about veterans; they treat them like trash too. Unreal. Did they ever give you uh, child care while you were while you were working there? I do not have children, but they do not. It's crazy, man. I appreciate the call, Rob. Thanks so much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yep. Uh, let's go to Dave and McMinnville on Tyson Chicken. Dave, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, man? Well, just a little thought here. You remember how last week the governor was on the radio and he was talking about all these new companies coming to Tennessee and he had lots of lineups. Was he blowing smoke up our backside telling us, hey, boys and girls, get ready because I'm going to bring in the illegals to take your damn job? I mean, this is getting just a little bit crazy. Now, the vans, I can send you pictures. I've chased them off onto the interstate going to the doctors. We got to get with it, and we got to tell them we don't want them here. I'm but with you. I think it I starts think with a boycott. got a little more in it than I, he told. I, I think we need to start boycotting Tyson. Dave, you in? Yeah, I'm in. Been in. All right. Appreciate it, Dave. Let's go to uh, another Dave. Dave in the borough. Dave, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, man? Hey, yeah. I talked to Scott Desjolais' office, and he didn't know anything about what's going on with uh, with Tyson. So I asked him, I asked them to uh, do something at the federal level, and I called the governor's office, and the lady that answered the phone, she acted like she didn't know anything about what's going on with Tyson and all that. So, um, you know, and I, that's not, that's, that's just the least of what I'm doing. I'm going to be calling the other, uh, my other, uh, state reps and uh been in their ear too hey i appreciate dave i'm gonna let everybody that i know about this as well i'm gonna get in touch with uh marshall blackburn's people Haggerty's people i'm gonna text andy mm -hmm. ogles even though i don't know if he wants me texting him anymore but i'm gonna text him <laughs> i'm gonna text him i appreciate right. the call dave i'm gonna talk i'm gonna reach out to Burchett's people i'll reach out to deja Lay's people i will uh reach out to everyone i can and it's amazing to me that they say we don't know anything about this we don't know anything about this it's on, it's on the uh, Fox News website. Uh, this is a big story. They're reporting about it in New York. That this is a big victory. We don't know any... We've never heard this. You don't know what's going on in your own backyard? It's amazing to me. Shocking. Pat and Gainsborough, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Pat? Hey, yeah, Chris. I want to let you know, I guarantee you that the federal government's got their hand in this. They're propping up Tyson. Back in the 90s when, in Shelbyville, when they got caught hiring the illegals, one of the stipulations that they could reopen was they had to take in all the Somali refugees. Mm. 
so that the federal government, when they did that, the federal government reduced their fine. Really? And then, I don't know if your listeners remember, but a few years after that, they had so many Somalis working there that they wanted to do away with Labor Day as a paid holiday and put in Ramadan instead. Huh. Fascinating. So, yeah, this has been going on for a while, and I guarantee you Tyson's not just doing it on their own. I'm sure the feds are paying them or, or reducing fines, doing something to to facilitate this. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of companies involved in this. It's called the Tent Partnership for Refugees, and uh, they, they all kind of engaged. Chobani Yogurt is involved with this, um, according to the Fox News story. There, there's a bunch of companies doing this. It, it is not just Tyson. But I, I, I personally, I, I'm, I'm insulted by the Tyson part because it's in our own backyard. Uh, yes, and just for the record, I've already emailed Tyson and told him I'm done. And, and, and as listeners, we need to notify Tyson we're done. Yeah, and I think if we can, if we can be sure of anything, uh, it's that these boycotts work. Right. We, we did it Absolutely. so effectively with Bud Light. Like we can do this again if we all kind of stand up and say, no, we're not dealing with this. We're not we're not supporting this and we're not a part of this. Well, Chris, the boycott of Tyson back in uh, 2008 when they were going to get rid of the Labor Day holiday, there was so much uproar. By that, that happened on a Thursday. By Monday, they had reverse course because of the boycott threat. Listen, th- these things work. And we need to yeah, we need to throw our weight around more as conservatives. Like I'm, I'm tired of being the silent majority. Like let's let's get Amen. angry and and really like vote with our wallet every single day. Amen. Hey, I appreciate your call, Pat. Thanks so much, Monty in Shelbyville. You're next on Super Talk. What's up, Monty? Yes, I live in Shelbyville, and Tyson has ruined our city and our county. We are considered a low income city. We have 75% of Shovel Central High School is all Mexican. I was in Walmart a few weeks ago, and on a Friday, and I was having to swap something at the service desk. There was a few of the Mexicans or whatever in front of me. They would go up to the register, swipe the card. The cashier would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a thousand. The next one walked up, the same thing. There was people lined up, the Mexicans, all out Walmart. They were getting a card and swapping it and getting $1,000. They have ruined our city. We're considered low income. All the kids in our schools, public schools, are on free lunch and have been for years. And they are ruining Shelbyville and Bedford County. Hey, I appreciate the call, Monty. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, it's got to be a tax burden on the county, right? It's got to be. So Tyson is closing factories, losing jobs. You know, at, at first read, I'm thinking those are American jobs, but after after talking to all of these people uh, in our own backyard with personal experience at Tyson, it's like, well, nah, Maybe it was 70, 30 uh, illegal alien jobs to American jobs. But then they're going to import all the newcomers to Tennessee. And they're going to give them paid time off for court cases, corporate housing, child care, rides to and from work. And they're even budgeting a million and a half dollars to help them with their court cases. I, I don't know of any other jobs where you get that kind of benefit as an American. Anybody? I don't. It's 1051 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
Just in time for the busy travel season, one airline trying to reassure customers about safety. Details at 11 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Hey, if you want to get it on my boycott of Tyson Foods uh, and you want to know which Tyson brands, uh, you can go to at Chris Hand on Air on Twitter. One of my friends sent me a list of all the Tyson food brands. And, I mean, in this economy, a boycott is just smart for saving money, you know? Uh, it turns out, also, uh, many of the fast food places use Tyson chicken as well. KFC, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Burger King, Chick-fil-A, Popeye's. So it's like all of them. We're saving so much money. <laughs> this is a good thing. I mean... What they're doing is absolutely garbage. I, I suggest that you call uh, everybody. Call your congressman. Call your state reps. Call the governor. And, and let them know that uh, we don't want Tyson to be closing their plants, cutting jobs uh, in, in different states, only for them to then be importing illegal aliens here to Tennessee. Newcomers. Sorry. Newcomers. And then, I mean, the benefits that they give them. No American gets a benefit like this at job at a job. They don't get paid child care. They don't get corporate housing. Americans don't get a ride to and from work. Their court cases paid for by Tyson Chicken. Are you kidding me? Garbage. So if you if you want to get in on my boycott, I'm going strong. I'm going strong. Uh, you, you should join in with me. At Chris Hand on air for a list of all their products. And we'll, we'll do this thing together. It's 11 o'clock on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Full forecast in two minutes. Russian leader Vladimir Putin declaring victory in an election there. No serious challengers facing him. But Russians around the country protested, inspired by late opposition leader Alexei Navalny. Tom Sufi Burridge with details. Vladimir Putin reaffirming his iron grip on power in a stage-managed election. Putin claiming his highest ever victory, a whopping 87% of the vote. The only other candidates were Kremlin approved. Virtually all opposition leaders are in exile, jailed or dead. It's an election year back over here, and all of a sudden, after three years into his first term, President Biden has an idea. The White House is calling this the most comprehensive action ever taken by a president to advance women's health research. Now, this, officials say the goal here is to make sure that women get the answers that they need about their health, since for far too long, medical research has focused on men and left women out. Now, the president, he is directing federal agencies to collect more data on women's health, and this also adds $200 million in new funding for new research. As Selena Wang reporting, and one of the major airlines trying to reassure customers about safety with the busy travel season just getting started. United Airlines is pointing to recent maintenance and training measures to show it's improving flight safety. In a letter sent to customers this morning, CEO Scott Kirby writes United is reviewing recent high-profile incidents, including the discovery of a missing external panel when a flight from San Francisco landed in Medford, Oregon. Kirby told customers the company will learn more from these incidents and continue to put safety first. That's Brian Clark reporting and the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
1104 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Uh, I, I see everybody chiming in. Everybody's doing the boycott on Tyson. It's good. We, we did good work today, Mac. You feel, Let's go. You feel good? Yeah, I feel vindicated. Uh, well, there was another caller that sent in a text. What do you say? Yeah, um, on the Members Nutrition Super text line 3797, since we're on this subject, Quanta Laverne, Tennessee, manufacturing computer servers for Amazon, full Venezuelans, they're proud of their illegals. All right. Can we do, well, let's just do one boycott. <laughs> yeah, time. we're getting a bit overwhelmed here. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. I'd have to do my research on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm out on, on Tyson. I don't know. What a Quanta Laverne? Yeah, Quanta and Laverne, I guess. I don't know. I don't doubt you, 3797. We just got to go one at a time here. One at a time. Yeah. Like, set them up. We'll knock them down. <laughs> we'll, we'll look into it. I promise. Uh, <laughs> also, Ann on the Super Text line said uh, she's with me. So, if Ann is oh, in yeah, on the boycott. If Ann's in on the boycott, we're gaining, we're gaining steam. Oh, we're, yeah, we're in. All right. I do want to switch, uh, switch lanes a little bit. I know we could probably talk Tyson Chicken all day. Uh, oh, for sure. Yeah. It's garbage. Disgusting. We're not doing it. Anecdotally speaking, least favorite chicken of the Christmas <laughs> show. <laughs> um, all right. I do want to talk about 2024. You want to talk about 2024? Woo! All right. So let's let's talk about 2024. We're, we're getting excited. You know, Trump is gaining momentum. I, I'm not trying to say uh, that we don't have a, a dog fight on our hands. But we're meeting people where they are, okay? And, and I think that this is this is really good. Uh, the Young Republicans did a clothing drive in the Bronx in New York. Just right there in the heart of the city. And, and in these communities where you have a lot of illegal aliens coming in, I think it's good for these Republicans to be focusing on the ground game, right? Meeting people where they are and showing them that we're in these communities, we want them to succeed, and we're there for them. Uh, this is what it sounded like at the coat drive. Got you. We got a couple of blazers here, fine blazers. Yeah. Right here, nice. tuxedo jackets. We got a jungle pattern right here. Very nice. Got some flannel patterns. Dang, look at that. <laughs> Okay, what we get? Okay, I got a call for the winter for the next year, and I got another call for my son. Come and get your call right here on Burnside. Hello. They, <laughs> thank thank you. you. Yeah. That's given to the community. It's a Republican organization. Okay, but we are we Republican too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. We need Trump back in the house. You hear that? So we're a Republican organization. She goes, oh, well, we're Republican too. We need Trump back in the house and you're seeing this turn quite a bit i was actually shocked to see uh some audio of stephen a smith dare i say dare i say he's becoming a trump fan or at least opening the door to that possibility i saw a video online and he starts out saying you know trump trump made a good point donald trump made a very salient point. I know you don't hear me say that often, but it's true. He made a very salient point a couple of weeks ago, or I think it was in the immediate aftermath of Super Tuesday when he was talking about President Biden, and he was saying, you know, come beat me. Stop trying to use the legal system in order to pull it off. Come beat me. Don't use the legal system to pull it off. Stop with the lawfare. And he goes on to say, listen, you know, Biden's going to say he's not involved. But we all kind of know what time it is, right? Now, obviously, President Biden would say he has nothing to do with me. He's the president of the United States. He's not the prosecution in, in Georgia. He's not the prosecutor in New York. OK, he has nothing to do with those things. So he may say maybe it's true. But I find it very, very difficult to believe that everybody on the Democratic side is innocent. I mean, when you look at the inordinate amount of charges that are coming Trump's way, I mean, when is enough enough? When is enough's enough, says Stephen A. Now, Stephen A. then goes on to run through all the court cases, right? All of them. From uh, Fannie Willis to Letitia James to Hack Smith to the Supreme Court in Colorado. And, and he's like, this is ridiculous. It's lawfare. But Stephen A. is just waking up, okay? He, he's just starting to pay attention, it sounds like to me. And, and I think 
it reflects the attitudes of a lot of Americans recently waking up. Not just black America, but Americans, right? Disillusioned Democrats, independents. Stephen A. leaves out the fact that Fannie Willis met with Kamala Harris, right? Stephen A. leaves out the fact that Letitia James campaigned on going after Trump. Stephen A. doesn't know or doesn't address that there were reports that Jay Bratt, a top aide to special counsel Hacksmith, met with Biden's White House officials numerous times before the indictment. But he is waking up. So he runs through all the court cases and then he says, you know, I'm going to sum it up. Ladies and gentlemen, there's so much to get into. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to simply say this. Trump is kicking the Democrats. You know what? 91 charges. Four indictments, 91 counts against him. He's been impeached twice. And he still ran away with the GOP nomination. It was a cakewalk. DeSantis couldn't beat him. Christie couldn't beat him. Nikki Haley couldn't beat him. Vivek Ramaswamy couldn't beat him. They can't touch him. And you still, we're still waiting for him to go to jail. We're still waiting for him because supposedly he's done so much. Russian collusion, remember all of that? We're still waiting for the jail. We're still waiting for the guilty verdict. We're still waiting for him to be incarcerated. We're still waiting for him to be seen in zebra stripes. You can't touch him. And now he's thrown this salvo. He said, yo, why don't you come beat me? Stop engaging in lawfare and using the legal system to push your political agenda. Come beat me. That's what he did. This is, listen, I do sports most of the time. That's the kind of language we want to hear, ain't it? Can you beat him or not? Can you beat him or not? Now, I know Stephen A. isn't as big as he once was, but he's got an audience, right? Like, he's got a massive audience. Stephen A. is huge. Massive. I wouldn't say it's as big as it was when he was doing... Uh, what was it? First take with Skip? Skip Bayless? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cable television general just isn't what it was, yeah. But, but he's, he's, still, he's got his own podcast. I mean, yeah, he's... Huge platform. He's huge, man. He's huge. He goes on a bunch of people's shows. He's been on conservative shows selling his book, right? I think yeah. he was on Mark Levin talking about his book. Yeah, he likes Mark Levin a lot. Stephen A. is waking up. I think, I think this is indicative of a lot of America waking up to what's going on. And then you see the stuff over the weekend, the bloodbath. It's a bloodbath. I, I think that's going to further wake people up. I do. But the important thing is to meet these people where they are. Right? The disillusioned Democrats, the independents, meet them where they are. And that's why I think it's so great that what the young Republicans did with their clothing drive in the, in the Bronx. Meet these people where they are. The Democrats aren't doing anything to help these neighborhoods. They're importing new citizens. That's not going to help these neighborhoods. People are waking up. And that's why the ground game is going to be so important in 2024. And, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so pumped that the RNC is under new management and is finally making some changes. Uh, Lara Trump announced that the RNC hired Scott Pressler to lead legal ballot chasing operations. Now, listen, I, I'm not a fan of the ballot harvesting. I'm not a fan of the mail-in voting, but we have to play the game by the rules that our, 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 our opposition is playing by, right? And in the states where this is legal, we need to be out there doing the exact same thing. So uh, recently elected RNC co-chair Lara Trump, she announced on Friday uh, that they would be hiring conservative influencer Scott Pressler to lead legal ballot chasing operations. This is massive. This is one of the reasons why we failed in 2020. We didn't have the systems in place to do that kind of stuff. So now uh, we're putting in some effort on the ground game. And now the RNC is planning to go after these ballots. We have to. We have to. And Scott Pressler has been out there registering people to vote nonstop. He has been on the ground. His ground game is unparalleled to a lot of people's. And I, th I think it's awesome. I really do. 
But uh, Lara Trump announced this on, on Benny Johnson's show. Yes. One of the biggest lies and the most pernicious lie, I think, that's ever been told to the American people is that 2020 was the most secure election in our lifetime. Oh. You you have leveled multiple. You've leveled a lawsuit against Michigan. Now you're saying that you are like the RNC is going to invest big time in chasing ballots. Can you talk me through the structure of ensuring that let's just call it all of the shenanigans, the funny business, the out downright criminality, the illegality and the rigging in the electoral process does not happen again in 2024. Yeah, I mean, look, there are millions of people, I'm going to say 75 million plus Americans who still are like, what What the hell happened in 2020? They didn't get any answers. They all wanted us to move on, but they all feel like something was awry, something was amiss, because let's be honest, 81 million people were not so inspired by a guy campaigning out of his basement who could barely string two sentences together. They said, we're going to come out big for this guy. Absolutely not. No one believes that. So at the RNC, it is something that we're taking incredibly seriously. We have the first ever election integrity division. This is an entire wing of the building dedicated solely to that. So doesn't it sound amazing to hear the new head of the RNC, the co-chair, Lara Trump, speaking this way? We didn't hear Ronna McDaniel saying this. She bent the knee effectively. Lara Trump is saying, no, 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 no. We're, we're, we have election integrity at the top of our mind. We're going to be chasing ballots, legally ballot chasing operations. This is the new RNC. How do you do that? Right now, you just talked about a lawsuit we have in Michigan. We have in 23 states, 78 lawsuits single-handedly to address this issue, to make it easier to vote and harder to cheat in 2024 we know about all the states who illegally changed their voting laws in 2020 under the guise of covid it flips some of those background but it also adds an extra layer of protection on top of that in addition we now have the ability to train poll workers these are not just poll watchers people who physically stand in a polling location and kind of look around and maybe might be able to see something these are people benny who get to handle a ballot who can count the ballots coming in and the ballots going out so they know what the numbers should be at the end of the day on top of that we are also hiring and we are asking for volunteer attorneys all across this country, we want you in a polling location near you every single minute that there is voting going on because we want to be able to address a problem immediately in real time. We cannot wait until it's too late. We also have to strike the fear of God in people who would ultimately be cheating. That's the new head of the RNC. Sounds like she's going on offensive. And by hiring Pressler, who's a conservative action, he, a conservative activist, started the Early Vote Action Organization that's the right move. He's going to focus on mobilizing Republicans to participate in early voting efforts. They're going to concentrate in key swing states. Arizona, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. This is a big move in the right direction. And this is one of the reasons why I think the left is terrified. They see what the temperature is on the ground. They know that nobody's really benefited from three years of Biden being in office. And people are fed up. They are fed up. And so you see the media just double down on demonizing efforts, playing a clip out of context when Trump is talking about the auto industry, and then saying he's threatening political violence. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, the distinguished gentleman in Lebanon is on the line. Calvin, what's up, man? Hey, Chris. How you doing? Good. How are you, sir? All right. Hey, as far as this bloodbath, he hit on one bloodbath with vehicles. I'd like to know what corner we're going to turn if we get these uh, left back in th this office. What corner are we going to turn that it ain't going to be a bloodbath? Right now, they're slowing down. It's election year. They're trying to pull the wool over our eyes again. We're going to have it in the economy. It's going to be a bloodbath. They have just started burying this country. They need four more years to bury it deeper. Uh, it's going to be a bloodbath in every department. Wars, spending, economy, gasoline. It doesn't matter what corner we turn. If people have not had enough, I mean, when is enough enough? This is nothing but a power thing, but telling us how to speak on social media, cutting 
cutting those off. I've had it, man. I've had it. I, I'm with and you. I hope the worst. Yeah. I, I hope the rest of the country's had it. No, and I, I think that a lot of people are feeling just like you, Calvin, and I appreciate your call. But I think that, you know, we do have to take note that, thank goodness, we have Twitter back in the hands of someone sane. I don't think Elon Musk is anybody's savior. But that that bloodbath stuff was debunked in real time. You know, the, the left played one version of the clip. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole... That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But on Twitter, you didn't have to look hard to realize that there's a a lot more to that quote. Mexico has taken over a period of 30 years, 34% of the automobile manufacturing business in our country. Think of it. Went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think, they think, that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line and you're not going to be able to sell those guys if I get elected now if I don't get elected it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole that's going to be the least of it it's going to be a bloodbath for the country that'll be the least of it but they're not
It is an election year, and all of a sudden, President Biden announcing new executive orders. Details coming up at 1130 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. Uh, I'm checking on some of these messages uh, on the Members Nutrition text line. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people are happy with uh, some of the moves that are being made at the RNC. 8335 said, why in the world did the RNC keep putting Ronald McDonald back as the head? You know, Ronna, Ronna McDaniel. The swamp just wants to go along to get along, and there's no desire to win. I'm so glad there's a new sheriff in town. Isn't it nice? Isn't it nice to see some stuff getting changed? I'm a big fan. I love seeing the ground game. I love seeing an emphasis on the ground game. Scott Pressler should have been hired a long time ago by the RNC. Luckily, they have righted that wrong. It, it was, uh, it, I, I hope that this isn't going to be, we're going to look at this down the road and go, it was too little, too late. I hope that we'll look at this as a huge turning point for the election. I think it is. I, I think it's a big deal. Meanwhile, um, the, the world is still in turmoil under Joe Biden. Don't worry, though. Don't worry, though. Did you hear what uh, his State Department said about Haiti? They're, uh, they're going to plan charter flights for Americans. But they warned them that the trip to the airport is dangerous. So. You're not, you're, you're not going to be an illegal alien going to a Tyson food plant uh, and get a ride. You got you to gotta figure that out on your own. But there'll be chartered flights. I find that such a slap in the face. Like, but but it, are you surprised? Oh, the Biden administration leaving Americans behind in a uh, hellhole. It, where have we seen this before? Oh, that's right, Afghanistan and in Israel and and Lahaina and and Ohio. Yeah. It, We've seen this movie a couple of times. Uh, and actually, we've seen this one as well. Uh, Rep. Corey Mills from Florida, his team is rescuing Americans from Haiti. He's actually just rescued 13 Americans. He's just going out there himself and doing it. Again, meanwhile, the Biden administration is not really making any strong efforts to help Americans trapped there. Biden. Abandoning our citizens in foreign countries and domestically and, and internationally, actually, uh, Biden 2024. That, that's what the Biden administration is doing and has done, and they've displayed that time and time again. But the media, oh, the media will focus on the bloodbath hoax, and then that will be the big story uh, as we head into the week. I can't wait to see what Joy Reid has to say about it. You know, you know that's going to be an unhinged rant uh, for the ages. But will they say anything about the Biden administration, quite frankly, not making any efforts to save Americans trapped in Haiti? Probably not. Probably not. And this is the the problem with the media. It's like we, we have a two-tiered justice system and we have a two-tiered coverage system. And the media won't cover this kind of stuff. It's amazing. It really is. But it's not shocking. It's not shocking at all. <laughs> the media. I mean, the, the the whole bloodbath hoax drives me up a wall. By the way, uh, WKRN uh, in Nashville, they, they also took part in the bloodbath hoax. If you want to send a message to their news director, I did. Uh, you, can, you can find his Twitter handle on my page, at Chris Hand on Air. I asked him if he approves the left-wing propaganda tweets before he sends them out. So, you could... Oh, no response there? Wow, I'm, I'm really surprised. No, and and you know <laughs> what? Uh, I was shocked I didn't get a response, and he actually, he's, he's tweeted since then. Wow. I'll tell you what, this is probably the most activity he's gotten on his Twitter <laughs> in a while. Uh, his name is Elbert. Unfortunate. I know. Feel bad. 
my wife wouldn't have let me name my kids Albert. Tell you what. <laughs> uh, he doesn't get, I mean, the poor guy, he doesn't get any likes on his tweets. He gets, he gets no love, right? He gets no love. Uh, many likes and, and uh, people adding their own commentary to what I said to him. Yeah, Albert, he's been ratioed quite a bit. He, him and <laughs> WKRN have been ratioed to high heaven over their tweets that are left-wing propaganda. WKRN, if I was a local advertiser, uh, I wouldn't want to advertise with a propaganda network like WKRN. Can we just start reversing the cancel mob? I mean, I've already, I, I've been on a Tyson food boycott ban today, <laughs> and now I want advertisers to pull from WKRN. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to be the baddies, but should we? Should we push for that? Yeah, all right. I'll push for that. It's eleven thirty-one on Super Talk ninety-nine-seven WTN. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Full forecast in two minutes. Russian leader Vladimir Putin declaring victory in an election there with no serious challengers facing him. Dissent in Putin's Russia, an increasingly dangerous game. The authorities clamping down, banning any candidate campaigning against Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In Russian-occupied parts of Ukraine, ballot boxes taken to people's homes under armed guard, according to Ukrainian officials. The U.S. calling the vote there blatant propaganda. Tom Sufi Burridge reporting. It's an election here and President Biden today is going to try to win points with an executive order on health care. The White House says the executive order the president will sign today, along with nearly two dozen new actions, will be the most comprehensive set of measures ever taken to advance women's health research and innovation. The executive order will direct federal agencies to strengthen research and data standards on women's health and prioritize investments in women's health research. The executive actions will drive research into women's midlife health and diseases and conditions that are prevalent after menopause. Many of the actions announced today are contingent on Congress approving funds in next year's budget. That's Karen Travers reporting. And the latest news, weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
Hey, it's Chris Sand here for my friends at Paul Winkler, Inc. You know Paul. I know Paul. And I knew him before I worked here because I would listen to his show, The Investor Coaching Show, which happens every Saturday from 3 to 6 on WTN. And you listen to that show, and I tell you what, the, the same guy that you hear on the show is the Paul Winkler you meet in real life. But you may not know he started that show after he spent time studying under an economist who went on to win a Nobel Prize. That's Paul's background. That's kind of where he cut his teeth, and that's pretty cool. He's also an avid collector of financial planning designations. He has up to eight now. And my wife and I, we work with Paul. You know that. But we heard him on WTN way before I started working here. And it was one of the first things I wanted to do when I started working here was link up with Paul. And here's why. Uh, he's smart far smarter than I am in the financial world. And he can break things down for me to understand in a way that I can understand. He can do the exact same thing for you if you're like me and don't really know where to start. Plus, Paul's team hold themselves to the highest level of fiduciary status. Because of that, I have to tell you I get paid when I do these commercials. That's the law. But I like that Paul's team does nothing on commission. It's huge to me because you can be sure when they're helping you make decisions for your financial future, it's just that. It's for your financial future, not theirs, because nothing is done on commission. They'll educate you along the way so you never get that uneasy feeling of blind trust, and you'll walk away feeling educated. Plus, they'll look at your whole financial picture first and then help you make the decisions because your financial picture is going to be different than anyone else's. And they'll look at everything, and then they'll make a plan. Set up a 15-minute phone call today. You won't be sorry you did. Just go to paulwinkler.com. That's paulwinkler.com. Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. I I'm looking forward to uh, everybody doubling and tripling down on the bloodbath hoax. It this, one this one might be my favorite hoax of all the hoaxes. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. I like this one. You know, the the Biden-Harris campaign HQ Twitter, they put out a statement. Oh, it's the violent rhetoric. Can you believe oh, it? I, I saw that. Yeah. Can you see it? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> how, how could he get away with this? Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole... That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. No, oh, it's got to be a bloodbath. Ah! <laughs> People are terrified. <laughs> they, of course, this is for the low IQ leftist out there that can't do any research or think critically at all or, or look for the other side of these seven seconds of audio that they've isolated for context. Because if you were to do that, well, you hear the context, and the context is he's talking about the auto industry. Mexico has taken over a period of 30 years, 34% of the automobile manufacturing business in our country. Think of it. Went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think, they think, that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line. And you're not going to be able to sell those guys if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. A friend of mine. Context, my friends. Context is important. Elon Musk tweeted out, uh, it's easy to tell who is an NPC today. An NPC, of course, is a non-player character. If you think about it in terms of video games or the guys that are just walking around on the sidelines, side like um, in Madden, the referee is the NPC. You know, he's just going to do what he's been programmed to do, the non-player characters. So th it's easy to tell who is an NPC today, said Elon Musk. And this was debunked in real time. After his rally in Ohio on Saturday, Trump said there would be a bloodbath for the auto industry. 
It didn't stop the left from running with it. It didn't stop Nancy Pelosi from going on TV and saying, I think he was, I think he was threatening political violence. Morning Joe, Joe Scarborough tweeted out, Donald Trump's America, and he's proud of it. He promised another bloodbath if he loses again. And he posted a picture of J6. Uh, after Elon tweeted at him, he deleted the post. Elon said Jan 6 was not a bloodbath by any definition, and Trump was referring to job losses in the auto industry when he used that word. Your post is extremely misleading. Morning Joe Scarborough deleted the tweet. Good for him, actually deleting it. You know, tucking his tail between his legs and understanding that he's wrong. Many of the leftists have no idea that they're wrong. In fact, uh, at this time, our, our own WKRN... Uh, in Nashville, they still have their tweet up. Isn't that amazing? WKRN, News 2, the ABC affiliate. Uh, they're, they're leading with the leftist propaganda. They're, they're posting it. Can you, can you believe this? Trump, orange man bad, says WKRN. And they were ratioed to high heaven. Uh, on, on Twitter... Ratio is when you get far more comments than you get likes or retweets. So on this WKRN post, uh, they have 128 mostly negative comments, 24 likes. It's not a good thing to happen. Also, uh, the engagement on WKRN's tweets. I mean, they have like 220,000 followers, and they 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 rarely, rarely get any large number of likes or retweets. And in fact, looking at their timeline, even though that post got ratioed, uh, that's one of their more high high likes on, on a Twitter post. It's kind of embarrassing. I tweeted at their news director, Albert Albert Tucker, uh, and I asked him if he approves the left wing propaganda before they post it on, on Twitter. I have yet to uh, receive any comment at the time of air. Uh, I, I know he saw the tweet. You can you can ask him yourself. Just go to Chris Hand on air. You'll you'll see the tweet that I sent to him. I wonder I wonder if he approves the propaganda. But it is it's it's absolute left wing unhinged propaganda. Now we can see this in real time. We know that Trump is gaining massive amounts of momentum, but we have to understand. Even with all of our wins, we have a big fight ahead of us. Like the RNC, we got a new co-chair in, La in Laura Trump. Uh, that That's big, right? Happy for that. Uh, they hire Scott Pressler to go after legal ballot chasing operations. Huge. Great win. But the fight is far from over. Biden campaign raised a record-breaking $53 million in February. $53 million in February. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. It's it's the most his campaign has brought in since its April 2023 launch. So now the Biden-Harris team has raised more than $331 million in total with a record $155 million in cash on hand. Now, I don't know if money is going to be the end-all, be-all to this election, because it certainly wasn't a factor in the GOP primaries. You know, Haley outspent Trump far more, far more than Trump spent, like by over $100 million. I, I don't think that that's going to be the end-all, be-all. But it's just another thing we have to compete with. We have to compete with the lawfare being thrown at Trump. We have to compete with the leftist propaganda media, and we're going to have to compete with this fundraising operation of the left. So it's important to celebrate our wins, but it's also important to not get ahead of ourselves. Of course, at the same time, Joe Biden is doing things to sink his own campaign. He's wearing these new shoes uh, that they're calling boat anchor shoes. For old folks, uh, they're they're meant for maximum stability. He's uh, he's got this new footwear. 
and they're they're saying uh, that it's feeding rumors that the 81 year old incumbent needs extra stability because of his series of falls and stumbles. He's been photographed wearing a black pair of these shoes called Hoka Transport sneakers with his formal suits rather than more traditional dress, dress shoe, shoes. Uh, and the Hoka's are meant for hiking, walking, and lifestyle and feature a quick toggle lace designed for easy on-off. And, and according to the product's website, th- they advertise as neutral stability for wearers who want a symmetrical bed of cushions. So the sneakers uh, boast a seal of approval from the American Podiatric uh, Association, and, and they're good for foot health and uh, will increase his stability. It's kind of embarrassing. Th- this is who we're up against. He's doing this to himself, right? And meanwhile, his policies are leading to devastation in the country. I saw a story here, and it's like, thank God the guy got caught. But a member of Hezbollah, a terrorist, was apprehended at the U.S.-Mexico border attempting to enter illegally. Thank goodness that U.S. Customs and Border Protection caught him. This happened on March 9th. He admitted he was a member of Hezbollah. He admitted that he wanted to make a bomb and hoped to go to New York City. This is a guy that got caught at Biden's southern border. So so the Biden administration, they have a wide open border. Uh, they have an old geriatric who needs stabilizing shoes uh, so he doesn't trip and fall. They're, they're showing their own weakness every single day, yet they're still fundraising to the tune of $53 million in February. We, we can't lose sight of the fact that we have a fight in front of us. And, and it's going to take a, a lot more uh, than just money to win. But I, I do think moves like Scott Pressler are moves in the right direction. It's 11.49 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
11.55 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I was just filling in Murphy about our latest boycott. Oh, yeah. Tyson Chicken. Listen, listen to this. All right, ready? This is this is the news in New York. This They're celebrating this, okay? Uh, this is how they're... Hello. What's up? Hey, everybody. I, I'm going right in. I'm going right in. I don't <laughs> yeah, have time. No, I got it. I don't got have time it. for pleasantries, Murphy. Morning, Matt. <laughs> Stop talking to him. Sorry, hey, we got to get to this. Yes, sir. We got a boycott to do. This is the news in New York. Okay. Talking about how great they're going to be treating illegal aliens I'm ready. coming to Tennessee. I'm they want to retain those workers by providing benefits such as temporary housing, a relocation stipend, part time off to a better acclimate to their new lives. And uh, employees will also receive on site childcare and transportation as well as paid time off, off to attend court hearings. And they're also saying that they're allocating $1.5 million to help them with legal services. So now at eight, we're going to take a closer look. So my initial reaction to that is, why are they offering that report in English? Fair. Why not just cut through the well, cut through the clutter and just offer it directly in the Spanish in the home language? But the left has to virtue signal. Oh, I guess so. So in order for them to be, feel so good about themselves, you have to do it in English to virtue signal how great you are. And then someone can translate it to the lowly plebes that, you know, it it's beginning the way that the left is reacting to the illegal invasion coming across our southern border is beginning to remind me of how the left acted about slavery i.e well our economy can't exist unless we bring these individuals who are unskilled manual laborers into our country and underpay them therefore depressing the economy and keeping jobs away from american citizens otherwise our economy wouldn't work yep i mean isn't that what the south argued well, Prior then, to the Civil War, and in some in some states, they're they're saying, "Please bring them into your home." Uh, I saw a news report in Massachusetts where a woman's like, "It's like I have a personal chef." <laughs> you didn't hear that one? She literally said it. It's like, uh, oh, you're great. you're doing you're doing slavery. You're doing yeah. That's called indentured. I mean, I they wash you your clothes too. It's what? unbelievable. What are you talking about? She she loves to she loves to cook. So it's like I have a personal chef. Hold on, hold on. Ready? I I have I found it for you. This is it's a delight and it's really fun having them what i realized is there's so much prejudice against refugees mostly because people don't know them lisa says she feels like she has her own personal chef as will donde loves cooking it's nice. It's nice. this is why don't you clean up around the joint too a yeah. donde i don't have to pay her a dime <laughs> i mean that's right hey whoa 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 where are you going a donde <laughs> you're not done with your chores I don't think we're going out today, Adon Day. Better get back to work. I mean, that's embarrassing. And then the, of course, I've heard you talking about the bloodbath thing today. That's so. That's so much fun. What? Oh, the that's threat so for much. political violence. That's so much fun. Oh my gosh! Did you hear uh, the the news director's comments from WKRN? You were telling me about Albert. Albert, Albert Tucker. I did not see Albert's. I I don't follow. Albert has a new follower on his. X machine. Oh, I followed him too. Did you, did you see what he said back to me? I, did, I, I haven't seen any of this exchange. What happened? He didn't say anything. Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Albert, like a typical liberal, uh, they pretend that the only point of view is their own, and when presented with other points of view, they run to the hills. Yep. And act like, uh, well, you're just a hater. You you don't really exist. Yep. In Albert's world, you don't exist. No. So, good for him. Yeah. Well, we, we're introducing a, uh, there's a, a, a new announcement. There's a new line of automobile out that we're going to be talking about in the Ooh. 12 o'clock hour. Very I like exciting. cars. I like Very cars. Exciting. Very exciting. Trump Motors. Oh. Yeah, new Trump Motors 2024 line. So we'll talk about that today. And um, a few other things maybe on the docket. We'll talk Riley Strain. That uh, that case has struck my interest. And then, of course, this nonsense going on over in Memphis. Oh, my gosh. Oh, let's riot, baby. Let's I, riot, Charlene. Let's I, go. I can't wait. For that, uh, if anybody's going to cover that story, let's riot in a proper way. It's Matt Murphy, noon to three. Hang out with us. It's Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN.